Assess your security vulnerabilities now. Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. What am I talking about? Vulnerability assessments. Um, it's what I used to do in the military. Some of what I did in the military. It's where you basically try to find holes in security, in defenses. Stuff like that. How can you bypass or defeat whatever security systems are in place. And there are ways for all of them. There's little tricks, which I get it, you don't know. Without going through a bunch of schooling and learning about different sensors and um, training and practicing, all this stuff like that. But here's what you can do. Security in the coming times, probably very tough times, is going to be very important. Your ability to secure, defend what you have, your property, your local area, hopefully your local area, because if you're defending your property, that's not a good idea. You want that standoff. What kind of things can you do? What kind of things can you look at? I'm not really going to go into the what can you do here. We're going to we're going to actually I'm going to do a series probably or a, a good video on Patreon about that. Links in the description below. It's a dollar a month. Tons of exclusive content there. Come over to Patreon, join Team AP. Um, it's well worth it. But right now, this video, we're going to talk about kind of how to, a bunch of ideas about how to perform a security vulnerability assessment. What do you need to look for? What do you need to be aware of? Those kind of things your security and I have to speak in very general terms you gotta understand because the way I vulnerability assess my property is way different than say somebody living in an apartment in New York City I mean there's so many variables um, like uh, I saw I didn't watch the video really um, I started to watch a little bit of it I'm really busy but Taborosaurus Rex um, shout out to him. If you're not a subscriber, go subscribe to him. Um, love his content, long range shooting stuff, a lot of good information there. But anyway, he was talking about um, anybody that gives you an answer, like straight up. If you say, hey, what kind of uh, primary defensive tool do I need? <laughs> the correct answer is it depends. Anybody that says, oh, you need this, 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 and this, and this, just carte blanche is um, full of BS. They don't know what they're talking about. Because it does. It depends. I'm not going to go into that side of things, but what we're talking about here is it depends on how your property is laid out, how you're set up. Are you living in a uh, suburban neighborhood? Are you living in uh, you know an urban um, setting? Are you living in a rural setting? Do you have 100 acres in the middle of nowhere? Well, you got to be aware of different things and set up different things. The bigger things to look at, so I'm going to approach this kind of thinking about my property uh, because it's what I'm most familiar with. So we're talking pretty rural, not extremely rural, and you hear the uh, freedom ringing in the background. Yes, that happens often, and they go all day long some days, um, yes, practicing their, um, their uh, rights. So having people like that around you is a good thing. But what kind of things do I look at? You need to look at avenues of approach. That's the biggest thing. Avenues of approach. How can a bad guy wishing to do you harm, to steal from you, kill you, whatever, how can they get to your house, to your property, to your location? So you got to look at roads first, right? That's the big, that's the first big one, roads vehicular access and how can you mitigate vehicular access to your property depends right how is it laid out how is it set up so if you're talking a property like mine okay I have a common road I don't have a super long driveway I just have a driveway off of a road but it's a private road um, so if I was gonna set up security I wouldn't do it at the end of my driveway I do it down at the bottom of the hill there's only eight houses in this area on our road. So down at the bottom of the hill, 
would be the best place to set security. Well, not the best place. There's one better place down a little bit further, that direction, and one other place down that direction. And then we can block off an entire area for vehicular traffic. On foot traffic is totally different, of course. So what kinds of, I'm not, actually I'm not gonna get into what kinds of things can you do. I said I'm gonna talk about that on the Patreon video. Um, but you need to look at how can people get to you. And then, like I said, we'll talk about in there about how to, steps to mitigate those threats and to give you a better chance of survival. What about on foot also? What is the terrain like? Is there a hill? Um, are you in a depression? There's a lot of th different things to think about. Also be aware of micro-terrain. Micro-terrain is like, the terrain you see on maps is macro-terrain. That is, you know, a hill a valley, a draw, a saddle, a, you know, a ridge, those kind of terrain features. When I'm talking about micro-terrain though, micro-terrain could be, I'm in a raised bed that produces micro-terrain. It's terrain that I could hide, I can crawl behind and work my way around and have concealment, if not in a lot of these situations, these raised beds, cover because how thick they are, how wide they are, all the soil and everything in them. Um, and I get it, it's not gonna stop everything, but micro-terrain could be a drainage ditch. Micro-terrain could be um, a big tree that fell over, a uprooted stump and the hole that it made. There's a lot of different things that create micro-terrain. A little, like a really little stream, not big enough to show on a map like a river or anything like that, might be in a situation where that's micro-terrain. It's terrain features that people can use to get closer to you under cover and concealment. So it could be rocks. Like I said, it could be trees, it could be a ditch, it could be a little, it could be little um, bumps in the ground. These are things to think about when you're doing your vulnerability assessment. Also, things like lighting, how well lit are areas. Are there any areas where there are delay features and or denial features? A delay feature would be like a fence that will delay whoever's come on the outside from getting on the inside. It's not going to deny them because unless you have eyes on. If you're sitting right there, eyes on with a defensive tool, they come up at the top, boom. Okay, that could be a denial. But it's fences are delay features. I'll tell you what is a denial feature though is these blackberries back in here. They start right about there and they go all the way down the hill. At least 30 feet. 30 feet thick of what? Six, five to seven foot tall blackberries? That's a denial feature to me. I'm not going through that. I've been through some bad stuff. I've been through the worst avenues of approach you can think of because that's what will allow you to be effective and to achieve your objective if you're the one trying to get in. Any feature that is not a complete denial feature, is a delay feature, is useless without eyes on. I know we're mainly going to that on the Patreon video, but because if there's just a fence, well, people just, it'll, it'll delay them a little bit to climb up over the fence. Even if it's barbed wire, razor wire, all this stuff like that, electrified, it's gonna slow them down, but they're still gonna get through. They're gonna either go over it or under it, or just knock it over. Without eyes on, all you did is, and you bought yourself some more time, but you don't even, you're not even aware of it because you don't even know they're there, right? So some things, like I said, eyes on. Eyes on doesn't necessarily mean that to be a person standing there watching every single little inch of your fence line or whatever it is. It could be cameras. It could be real-time cameras, not a game camera, because game camera, psh, you won't know until you go check the camera, and by, by then it's too late. Real-time feed cameras, you know, where you get an update you can see on your cell phone or your laptop, whatever it may be, on a monitor. Um, or motion sensors are also basically eyes on, lets you know that something's there and where it is, so then you can go deny them access. So delay, denial, 
yes, avenues of approach. Also, to have proper security set for you, you need to have egress routes. You need to have ways to get out of where you are, hopefully under cover, if you need to. If you're over facing overwhelming odds or something like that or whatever the situation may be and you know that staying put is untenable, well, then you're going to have to get out. And you need to be able to get out as much as you possibly can under at least concealment, if not cover. What's a good way to do that? Well, a good way to do that is dig a hole down through the bottom, <laughs> through your house uh, and then dig a hole, go, a tunnel going out somewhere and exiting out in the woods somewhere. Now, that's not always functional or possible. There are other ways also, or things to think about, are things that inhibit somebody from moving silently. But then again, if nobody's there to hear it, it's useless. Things like gravel to walk on, broken up glass. But I'm not recommending some of these things, obviously, within rule of law because you can't just sprinkle glass everywhere because then the neighborhood kid will come over and cut himself and they'll sue you and yeah then you'll be broke and you won't be able to afford any more preps <laughs> so obviously there's time and a place for these things you can do trip wires there's a lot of things started to get into the topic i'm not talking about sorry that is a separate video we'll talk about that and other things you can do also <sighs> say you live in an apartment or above, you know, above something, I don't know. Think about and look at your house, wherever you live, whatever you, even if you live in a travel trailer or whatever, what access points are there to the inside? Now, do you want to be in the situation where you're defending from that position, from that location? No, you don't, but you're not always going to be in the best situation. It may be last ditch resort effort. So what ways are there for bad guys to get in to harm your family, to steal your things, to kill you, whatever it may be? Where are your doors? Where are they set up? Are they lit? Are they motion detectors? Are they, do you have an alarm, home alarm system? What all things do you have? Even think about upper windows. That's what I was thinking about with the upper thing. Even if it's not a readily accessible door or window on the main level, think about above. Because all somebody's got to do is bring a ladder. That's not that difficult. So also make sure that they are secured. That your upper windows are barred. Um, and like I said, I started to slip into the category of what, you, what to do about it again. We're going to go in detail on that one, obviously, like I said, on Patreon. But looking around, I think about any weaknesses that I have where somebody can either get closer than I want or gain access to my house. And most houses, most people's properties are not set up in a way that they're not built with defense in mind. I mean, really, they're not. Some people do. I have tribe members that have set up their properties 100% with defense in mind. Way better off. Most houses are just put where it's convenient. They're close to the road because of utilities and the cost of you know running utilities further, um, all those kind of things. So you're not gonna have much standoff, especially if you live in a suburban neighborhood. That's why tribe is very important. And it doesn't have to be like best friends tribe. It could be neighborhood watch tribe. Who's out there keeping an eye on things? Who can you rely on to let you know somebody's, something's happening, something's coming? There are, like I said, there's a way to defeat almost anything you put out there. I mean, I've gone up against the best security features military installations have. And even then, with the, and it's overlapping, that's, that's another thing, is 
which we'll mainly talk about in the video again. <laughs> um, you can't just have one feature because it's easily defeated. So when you're performing this vulnerability assessment of your property, house, whatever it may be, just look at all the ways where, I mean, you may have to walk down the street a ways. Walk down the street a ways. Get some exercise. And then just look around. Where are, identify, first identify denial features, identify delay features, and delay or identify ingress routes. Whether it be a road, a path, a yard, grass. Grow food, not lawns. <laughs> That's what I say. Take up all that grass, but build a bunch of, you know, tall raised beds that you can use for cover. Bam, you can grow food and have better security. Not everybody can do that. Yes, anyway, I encourage you guys, please, to look at your location. Take a long, hard look at it. Walk all the way around your house and identify all the points of access. Every window, every door, every path, every road, every... And then take a look also at the neighbor's houses and see how they're set up. Look for things that make them vulnerable or in a strong position. And also, also look for things that will funnel people in a certain direction or funnel them, make them want to go a certain way. We'll talk more about funneling on that Patreon video. But anyway, I encourage you guys to get out, take a long, hard look at what you got and think about your weaknesses. And then go to Patreon and we'll talk about how to fix them, how to improve them, and all that kind of stuff. I love you guys. Have a wonderful day. And blessings to you and yours.